A Rolls Royce is the ambition of almost every newly qualified doctor, and preferably a Harley Street address to go with it. At the time, I was practicing medicine in rather more humble circumstances, and found that neither my new diploma nor my old car had got me very far. Thank you very much. That's all right, Doctor. It's always a pleasure to help a colleague. I was a junior assistant in general practice, the medical equivalent of, I suppose, a plumber's mate. My partner thought I needed more experience, so apparently did some of my patients. He divided the work between us. I did the surgery, the night calls and the rounds, and he looked after the social side of the practice. Ah, Simon, a little late, aren't we? Mm. Are we? The Williams boys got tonsillitis. Well, it'll clear up. You will take surgery today, won't you? I have an important consultation. They want my opinion urgently. All right. Thank you. The doctor had a daughter, a healthy girl, Wendy. Do you mind? No. Delicious, as always, Doc. <laughs> Time you thought about getting married, my boy. Patients prefer married doctors. They feel safer. Yes. Yes, I, I think it's plenty of time for that later on. Do you mind if I go right away because the big picture comes on at 8.10? Oh, you're going to the picture? Yes. Oh, how funny. Why, Wendy's going too, aren't you, darling? Why don't you go together? Oh, I'd love to. Pleasure. <laughs> how lovely. That'd be good. <laughs> the patients might feel safer with a woman in the background, but I didn't. Not with Wendy. Oh, Simon, it's you. I, uh, I heard a noise and I, I thought it might be burglars. Are you working? Yes. <clears throat> Your father left rather a lot of forms for me to fill up. Naughty Daddy. Never mind. I I'll help you. That's quite right, Wendy. I can manage. Oh. Have you got a headache? Yes, I have, Raoul. Well, I I'll rub your neck. Um, no, I'd really very much prefer that you oh, do. Oh, well, I'm very good at this. Now, just where do you feel tense? All over. I do wish you wouldn't bother, though, really. Oh, Simon, I knew it was only shyness. No. Aha. Uh -huh. Aha. Uh -huh. An immediate operation was necessary. Like many better men before me, I ran away to sea. I got a job as a ship's doctor on the SS Lotus of the Fathom Line. But first of all, I had to find her. Officer, can you tell me where the Lotus is birthed? Number 15, the Lotus. Number 15. New to these docks? <laughs> New to any docks. Oh, well. Go straight on till you come to that light. Turn left, down the slope, Carry on till you find two lorries parked near a watchman's hut. Turn right. Up the steps, down the narrow path, past the first two ships and it's the third. About two miles, as the crow flies. They say that worse things happen at sea. But what could be worse than being landed with Wendy? The Lotus had one great advantage. She carried no passengers. And that meant no women. The doctor. Come on in, Doc. I'm Hornby, mate of this stuff. How do you do? You found your way all right. Yes, thank you. Meet Mr. Archer, the second officer. How, How are you, you, Doctor? Mr. Wimble, the chief steward. How are I you keep doing? in with him, Doc. He's in charge of the booze. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have you on board, Doc. Trail, how are you? Hello, Doc. How are you? Well, what sent you to sea? Wine, women, or crime? Uh, well, women mostly. Not married, are you? No, no. Well, you keep it that way. Wives and waves don't mix, old boy. <laughs> Sit down. I'll take it from you. Oh, I forgot. That behind the chimney stack there is Fellows, our apprentice. Seventeen come Sunday. Nice to meet you, Doc. Nice to have a young Doc aboard. They told you at the office about the last one. Flowered I suppose. No, they didn't. No? No. Oh. Oh, well, never mind. Are you just out of medical school? No, I've been in private practice for the last two years. Hope you're hot stuff on sailors' troubles, Doc. Well, I suppose they're no different to anybody else's, are they? <clears throat> Would you like a cigarette? Thank you very much. I wonder if you know uh, Sir Wallaby Glebe, the ophthalmic surgeon. Uh... No, I'm afraid I don't. Oh, I do very well. He's married to my cousin. Oh, really? What do you drink, Doc? Uh, hadn't I better wait and see the captain first? I wouldn't. Not tonight. Oh. He doesn't welcome visitors after dark. He's not the social type. Perhaps it's because he isn't married either. <laughs> Neither was his father. You'll see, Doc. <laughs> uh, good morning, Doctor. East is the name. I'm the Doctor's steward. Oh, good morning. How'd you do? Oh. How do you do, Doctor? <laughs> I've a message from Father. Father? Yeah, the captain. He wants a bottle of his usual stomach mixture, pronto. Oh, he uh, suffers with dyspepsia, does he? Oh, yes, or something chronic. When he has one of his spasms, life's not worth living for all hands. 
very much. There we are, sir. Yep. The only stuff that squares up his innards is a special mixture he got from the late Dr. Flowerday. Makes him bring up the wind, Doctor. Oh. Uh, Dr. Flowerday was my predecessor, was he? Oh, yes, sir. Yes. But he's satisfied he was with me, sir, <laughs> if I might make so bold. Hey, uh, what happened to uh, Dr. Flowerday? Well, if you don't mind, sir, I'd rather not talk about it. <laughs> Shocking. It's them pipes, sir. You are situated, as you might say, immediately below the captain. The late Dr. Faraday and I had all our stores in there. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Do you play, Doctor? I could learn, I suppose. Oh. The late Dr. Flowerday was very keen on tennis racketing. Very keen indeed. We seem to be very short of drugs. Shouldn't there be an official stock or something? The late Dr. Flowerday and I had a... well, an arrangement like over the disposal of surplus stores. You flogged them, you mean? Oh. Spoon. Spoon. Take a card, Doctor. Come on, wait a minute. Now, come on. <laughs> now, look at it. Uh, the uh, fame of diamonds. Yes, quite right. The card tricks are rather out of place in a ship's hospital, don't they? Mm. Used to keep the late Dr. Flowerday and Fritz. Didn't half get knocked when he couldn't make out how they was done. Well, how are they done? Well, they was all faded arms, actually. <laughs> oh. You certainly know you wear on a pack of cards, Easter, don't you? Oh, I should say so. Worked the halls for three years. Pin young, I was. Famous Chinese magician. <laughs> Here, would you like to see my cutting? No, thank you very much. Some other no, time, look, I think, maybe. But look, I can't use this stuff. Chuck hmm? it away. Chuck it away? But I always keep everything. You never know when it might come in useful. <laughs> Mind your head, Doc. Don't want to be your own first case. Good morning. Good morning. You the butcher? Yes. I'm the new doctor. Both in the same line of business, really, aren't we, Doc? <coughs> morning. Nice looking bird. Is he yours? Yes. I'm the new doctor. Yes, we know. <coughs> Another flipping kid trying to be a sailor. Yeah. <laughs> um. Good morning, sir. Doctor. Well? <clears throat> your stomach medicine, sir. What's on your head? On my head? Nothing, sir. Exactly. Why not? Oh, oh, why? You want a cap, haven't you? Oh, yes, I have a cap, sir. A company regulation pattern. Then why the blazes aren't you wearing it? Don't really know, sir. The cab is warm for all official visits to the captain. There's no trap stuff aboard here. This is my ship, Doctor. Do you understand? My ship. Yes, sir. And she's probably run. I wonder if I could persuade you, sir, not to shake that bottle too much. It's liable. Stop telling me what to do with the old bits. Change that corn plaster, will you? It's not my job to change your corn plasters. You're the doctor, aren't you? Yes. <clears throat> there they are, the new one. Oh. Women, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Women, I suppose. I beg your pardon? Drove you to sea. Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, in a way. I thought so. I suppose your type a mile away. Well, I want you to understand I won't tolerate that sort of thing with my officers. I don't approve of women. They're unseamanlike and unnecessary. But surely, sir, even a seaman has to get launched somehow. I hope you understand your duties. You'll hell sick parade at nine o'clock sharp. You'll bring me the sick list at half past ten. And I want to know what's wrong with every one of them. None of this medical secrecy aboard. Everything's got to be out in the open. <coughs> Excuse me, sir. <coughs> Get away from me. Leave me alone. Uh, excuse me, that door's shut. Get out of here! Good morning, sir. Mr. Fellows, you'll oblige me by having this engine room telegraph cleaned up. Looks as if he's been out all night in a shower. Of... All right, Mr. Hornby. Let go, Farland. Let go, Farland! Oh, 
ahead, starboard. Slow ahead, starboard. Sir! Sir! Slow stand port. Slow stand port, sir. Well, we're finally underway, Doc. No popsies for a few weeks now, old boy. I know, I feel a different man already. This is the life. I should have tried this before. You'll have your sea legs in no time. Attention all shipping. The Admiralty has just issued the following gale warning to ship. South to southeasterly gales now in operation in sea areas Portland, White, Dover, Thames, Heligoland. <laughs> Bacon and sausage sandwich? Yes, sir. Any mustard in it? Yes, sir. Good. Tell the cook I want jam roly poly for my lunch. Oh. You know the only cure for seasickness, Doc? No. Oh. Pint of seawater in a bucket. Oh. Old sailor's remedy. Would you care to try some? No, oh, thank you very much. All right, just a suggestion. This pipe's not pulling. Have you got a pipe cleaner or something? Do you think you could? Clean it outside. It's a bit strong. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't uh, think of that. Da di da di da di da di da 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 di da. <laughs> oh, very nice, if I may say so, Mr. Jinkies. You cook very nice. Oh, it's nice to be appreciated. A contented <laughs> cook makes a contented crew, as the saying is. <laughs> oh, I'm contented, all right. <laughs> Here, that's why. Hmm? That's why. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's Rosie, the wife. Oh, oh, well, she's, uh, she's healthy. Oh, <laughs> Had yeah. plenty of your plumbed up, eh? <laughs> You're a lucky man, Mr. Yeah. J. Excuse yeah. me. Oh, she could do with it. Hooray! 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 Doc's a bit off colour. Yeah, heard you wear, Doc. Brought you something for it. Real sailor's remedy. Trail. Trail, I don't want this salt water, thank you very much. Oh, no, not that. This. Guinness, old oh, boy. No. <laughs> Put a bit of sugar in and pour it down. You'll be right as a trivet in half an hour. Oh. Uh, maybe that is the way, Doc. Nature's <coughs> remedy, you can't whack it. <coughs> Good morning, Doctor. Your oh. breakfast. That's the ticket, Easter. Give him something to work oh. on. You'll be all right, Doc. Oh. It's a bit choppy, isn't it? Easter, I don't want any breakfast, thank you very much. Feeling a bit upsy, Daisy, Doc? Oh. What you need is a good meal. A light repast, as you might say. Put you as right as rain. Here we are, a couple of eggs. Nice bit of gammon, a banger. Easter. Lovely bit of attic. Not just at the moment. Perhaps at lunchtime, but not just at the moment. No attic? No attic. Oh, well then, with your permission, Doc, I'll knock this back myself. Please you know, do. it's a pity to waste it. Oh. 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 No soup today, Doctor? Uh, no soup. Pity it's not bad for a change. Not feeling seasick, are you? No, 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 sir. Just not very hungry, that's all. Seasickness is entirely mental. People just imagine they've got it. Isn't that so, Mr. Archer? <laughs> yes, sir. There are some more complicated reasons than that, sir. It's entirely mental, I know. When the ship goes up and down, or from side to side, People think they're going to vomit, and by jingo, shortly afterwards, they do. But it's entirely mental. Yes, sir, just whatever you say, sir. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Wimble! Sir? This fish, Mr. Wimble, it's bad. But it can't be, sir. It's bad, isn't it, Doctor? I haven't tried mine yet, sir. <clears throat> well, for heaven's sake, man, taste it now. Don't wait for us all to be poisoned. <clears throat> What you excuse me, please? There you are. I told you so. The doctor agrees with me he hasn't even tasted it. Take the whole stinking issue and chuck it over the side. What, now? <laughs> You're ticklish, sir. Yes. Very nasty. There's nothing serious, I hope. Piss planum. Piss what? Planum. What we of the medical fraternity call athlete's foot. Fix it in a jiffy. Athlete's foot? I don't know any athletes. Now, this was made up special-like by the doctor himself. Well, what do I do with it? What do you... 
Oh, <laughs> you rub it on thrice daily after meals. After meals. Mm. Hello, second. What's the matter? Good morning, Doctor. Extraordinary thing, a touch of pest planum. I can't think how I got it. What? I gave him some of our special ointment, Doctor. Beast, you are an idiot. Any of the crew waiting to see me? Oh, yes, thousands of them. Won't you line them up and send them in? Oh, right, I don't. It's astonishing. Doctor, feels better already. I am grateful to you. Oh. Three times daily, shall I? Oh, yes, yes, certainly. If you think it'll do you any good. Do me any good? <laughs> good gracious me, it's wonderful stuff. Ah. Oh. Oh, I don't need that. <laughs> oh. All right, first one. Come in, Wilson. Sit down. Now, what seems to be the trouble? It's my chest, Doc. Keeps feeling as if something's pressing on it. Oh, well, take off your shirt. What sort of thing's pressing on it? Oh, I don't quite know. It's suffocating, like. Especially at night. Well, let's have a look. Something pressing on it. Yes, Doc. I'm not surprised. It must be the cannonballs. <laughs> <clears throat> well, just uh, flex your muscles and breathe naturally. What's going on? Oh, it's only Chippy Dog having one of his turns. Better go after him, he looks bad. He'll be in his cabin by now. Where? In his cabin. Right, get out. Oh. Oh. oh, he's violent. Uh, uh, oh. uh, get away from me, you swine! Don't, don't be alarmed, I'm here to help you. Get away, get away! Well, what's the trouble? Look at them dogs up there, them great Alsatians, five really great green ones! Oh. Uh, this man has DTs. Oh, yes, Doctor, he's been having them for years. He's been on the booze ever since we left. Says it makes him sad leaving Wapping. Oh, <laughs> If I might make so bold, Doctor, I'd say this was an occasion for medical comforts. Medical comforts? Yeah, the brandy, Doctor. He oh. should buck she for the hospital. Now, the late Dr. Knowday and I had a... An understanding. Well, Come along. Come on. Up. What is this? Up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Have a nice drink of this and make you feel better. Feel better? Yes. How many hour sessions do you see now? None. They're all gone. Good. Down you get. There you are. Mm. Thank you. Dog. Yes? Yes, yeah, three lovely little spaniel puppies. Oh. Thank you. You can have the bitch. Uh <coughs> uh. Yeah, uh. Yes, it'll have to come out, Corbel. Easter, how are we placed for dental equipment? Well, we've got a pair of pliers, sir. We must have a pair of dental forceps somewhere, surely. Well, they're rather old-fashioned, like. How about a bit of string and a doorknob? Oh, Easter, don't be an idiot. How are your friends aesthetic? Got some ether? Oh, Doctor, ether makes me sick. And no one's going to use it on me! <clears throat> well, what about medical comforts? That I'm in favor of. <clears throat> well, Doc, here's how. Come on, Doc. Let's get cracking. Yes. <clears throat> Come on. <laughs> Come on, open. Come on, wide. Wider. Am I interrupting the doctor? We're extricating a molar. Oh, come in, Trail. Come in. Yeah, you don't mind the sight of blood, do you? Blood? <laughs> no, not a bit. Good, good. Oh, uh, come along. We'll just try again. Open. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is going to hurt you a bit, I think. Once again. <laughs> Easter, can you apply a little counter pressure to his shoulders, please? Yes. Come along, hurry up. Put your knee on his chest, Doctor. What? Your knee on his chest. 
Nail his chest. Yeah. Right now your elbows against his shoulders. Huh? Elbows against his shoulders. That's right. Now pull. Well, how can I, you blithering idiot? Oh, well, turn it upside no, down. Just just leave I can't me. do it that way. Oh, I'm sorry once again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Doc. I, I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, no, no, not at all. Yeah. Look. Oh. Hello, Trail. Oh. What can I do for you? Oh, I'm quite all right, Doc. Thank you. M much better. M much, much better. Not sure. Thought, thought I had a slight toothache. All oh, good. Thank you. Oh. Come on, wake you, wake him. Oh, take it easy, Doc. It's far too hot. You're going to need all your energy when we put into port at Belos. <laughs> you are. Hello, Doc. Morning. Come. Morning, sir. Sick report, sir. No time to dress this morning, Doctor? I beg your pardon, sir. You're naked. Oh, am I, sir? I didn't notice. You're buttoned, Doctor. You're buttoned. Oh. You ought to watch yourself in the tropics. Heat does strange things to people. I remember when I first went third. The first officer came out of the bridge one hot morning and announced he was Cleopatra. Very awkward for all hands, sir. We were off the Nile Delta at the time, which may have accounted for it. Uh, yes, sir. I shall watch myself for any symptoms. And it was your predecessor, Flower Day. Poor fellow. However, let's have a look at this sick list. McDusky insomnia. What the devil does he think you're going to do about that? Perhaps he thought I was Cleopatra, sir. What's the matter with this man? What's this P-U-O? Pyrexia of unknown origin, sir. And you obliged if you speak English. He has a temperature, sir. Why has he a temperature? I really don't know. You really well ought to know you're the doctor, aren't you? Imagine what had happened if I didn't recognize a lighthouse when I saw one. Oh, it's hardly the same thing, sir, is it? I mean, after all, a, a lighthouse sticks up for miles, isn't it? Don't be impertinent. Bellos. Looks a wonderful place, Easter. I suppose you've been here before, haven't you? Oh, yes, it's a pretty spot, but it has some rather distressing memories, as you might say. Oh? The late Dr. Flowerday was very fond of it. Easter? What did happen to Dr. Flowerday? Oh, very melancholy, very melancholy it was. He was in a hurry to get ashore one day when we was anchored out here in the harbour. Oh? Well, he had ideas above his station. He tried to walk. <laughs> Chicken, two, don't swallow, hocus pocus, one, two, three, go. No. Dig it, Bob. Jump the darn silly. <laughs> Back at your old job, I see, eh? Oh, yes, I like hair cutting. Bit of an art. Like knocking up a bit of sculpture. Never know how it's going to turn out. Ouch! Oh, was that your ear, Doc? If you give me a septic wound, I'll brain you up. No, sterilize, Doctor. We of the medical fraternity know how to look after the tools of our trade. <laughs> Here, the violet come in the stern of us last night. The violet? Yeah, sister ship, bottom line too. Captain Beamish. He and the old man have been hating each other's guts for years, eh, Easter? Yes, professional rivalry-like. 
Both think that they got the best ship afloat. You wouldn't fancy a crew cut, Doc? No, I would not. Oh, hiya, Doc. I'm off the uh, Omar C. Ingersoll down the docks. Draper's the name. Oh, how do you do? How are you? I, I know I shouldn't have bust in on you like this, but uh, your chief mate said it was okay. Oh, perfectly all right. What can I do for you? I just want a pack of Aspro. <laughs> we're not carrying a medic and we're clear out. I don't want to put you in any oh, trouble. Oh, no, no, no trouble at all. Here, I, I brought you these in exchange. Oh, uh, yes. Look, um, why don't you pop over and have a cup of coffee sometime? Just walk straight up the gangplank and ask for me. Oh, that's very nice of you. Uh, what exactly? I mean, what do you do aboard? I'm the captain. Hi. Hello. All set, Doc? I wonder where he gets his shirts. <laughs> Same place you get your ties, old boy. Oh, do you like it? Picked it up last Christmas in B.A. Subtle, isn't it? Mm, she's got a very pronounced trabismus, isn't she? Is that medical for a good figure? No, a squint. <laughs> squint? Yes, yes, yes. Going ashore a second? Well, I'm not dressed like this to go down to the engine room. You take it easy, won't you? It's a very wicked city. Third, if you find your fun among the dregs of humanity, it doesn't follow that all officers wish to do the same. I... It's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> never go ashore with a second dock. Me never stands around. Just go over to Violet Bay, call on Captain Beamish. Very good, sir. Keep the men in order. If any of them tries to smuggle a woman aboard, clap him in arms. Yes, sir. Spending your evening in a shop window, Mr. Archer? Why? <clears throat> Taking the Alsatians for a stroll? What are you talking about? Well, you know, them ruddy great green ones. You've been drinking. Oh, how could you? <laughs> Drink. Softens the brain in the end. Hope you've locked your cabin and screwed up the ports. These chaps will pitch the teeth out of your comb, given half a chance. Don't the police keep an hunting? They're too busy enjoying themselves. They'll gamble on anything, these boys. And they'll chuck you into clink the first chance they get. You want to steer clear of them, Doc? Well, thanks for the warning. <laughs> Say, what a smashing-looking girl. I wonder who that belongs to. Hello, I wonder if you'd mind giving us a lift into town. <laughs> Rosita! <laughs> Rosita, my dear, I hope I haven't kept you waiting. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, hey. Captain Hogg, sir. Well? What's the matter with that officer, Beamish? You got scurvy aboard this tramp or something? Miss Mallet, can I introduce Captain Hogg? Good evening. Well, you are a surprise. I never expected a dear little beard. You really, madam? I... Miss Mallet is Sir Arthur's daughter. Oh. Mm, I've been a passenger of Captain Beamish all the way from Lima. I can't tell you how exciting it's been. I'm a landlubber, really, I suppose, and being at sea has been such a thrill. Indeed? Captain Beamish and his officers have been so kind. I think sailors get lonely on board without a little feminine company. Don't you? I haven't noticed it, madam. Now, Captain, you mustn't be strong and silent with me. Or I shall tell my father. Well, perhaps they are inclined to fret a little from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> fret? Oh, what a sweet way of putting it. Uh, Captain, aren't you going to offer Captain Hogg a drink? Of course. Oh, you could pour me just a teeny one, will you, while I get my things? Captain Beamish is going to take me out and show me the sights. Now, don't you slip away while I'm gone. <laughs> Derek Beamish, I can't help feeling sorry for you, having that as a passenger for the whole voyage. Chairman's daughter or not, I'd wring her neck in two minutes. What's this? I'm glad you find it amusing. That's a cable from the chairman saying that you're to sign her on now and take her home. 
No fight, Christopher, I won't. The chairman says you will, Hogg. Uh. Do you love me? Je ne sais pas, darling, I don't know. Je ne sais pas, but I'm hoping that you do. Do you want me? Je ne sais pas, but your loving eyes seem to tell me that you want me to be true. There's a magic, je ne sais quoi, in the air tonight. Je ne sais pas why my heart it is so gay. There are many things I don't know, but I do know this, that I love you, love you, love you, je le sais. Do you love me? Je ne sais pas, darling. I don't know. Still, I'm hoping that you do. Do you want me? Well then, darling, come on and tell me that you do. There's a magic je ne sais quoi in the air tonight. Je ne sais pas why my heart it is so gay. There are many things I don't know, but I do know this. That I love you, love you, love you. I am certain that I love you. I love you, love you, love you, je le sais. Hey, don't do that, old boy, please. I say, what a dish. Let's move in. She may have some friends. Oh, uh, no, I don't think I will, thank you. Oh, come on, Doc, you're our decoy. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. I wonder if you'd care to join my friends and myself in a drink. No, thank you. Oh, well, very nice, you know. I'm sure you are. But so am I. And anyway, I'm waiting for a friend. If I'm not back when we sail, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm sorry about them, but uh, we've just docked and... You don't look like a sailor. Oh, don't I? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm only half a sailor, really. What is the other half? A doctor. Are those two your patients? Sort of. Well, keep an eye on them. Their temperatures are rising. Mine's not very steady. <laughs> well, I see my friends. Excuse me, please. Oh, this is divine! Yes, I thought it was Hello, darling. There you are. George Hesler. This is Captain Beamish. Miss Colmer, Captain. Her father is the line's agent at Algiers. Daddy has the greatest respect for him. Oh, why didn't Captain Hogg come with us after all? He wasn't feeling very well. Oh, Tom Tom? No, shock. Oh, I wanted him to meet the other passenger. I doubt if that would have helped his recovery. Ah, Captain Beamish. Good night. Good evening. This is Colonel Perello, the Chief of Police, Miss Mallet, Chairman's daughter. How do you do? Miss Colbert, you've met. Ah, indeed I have. Enchanted, Miss Mallet. Are you visiting? Well, just popping in and out. If I can give some service to you, show you the beauties of our city while you are popping, I should be delighted. Oh, that's very kind of you. Uh, well, it'll have to be tonight, because the Lotus sails at noon tomorrow. But I thought the Fathom Line never carried any passengers. Sir Arthur made an exception in the case of these two ladies. Uh huh. Uh, so you are leaving uh, Belos, Mademoiselle Colbert. What should we do without our sweet little nightshirt? Nightingale. I have to go home, and Miss Merritt has very kindly arranged I travel with her. Oh, yes, darling, I do want you to meet the captain. Do you know he has the most magnetic little beard? <laughs> I never knew a beard could be so fascinating. <laughs> Nice to get, Doc. It's nice and quiet. Not a noisy dump like there's other places. Rest. As long as I can sit down for a bit, I shan't mind. You haven't come here to sit down, Doc. I have. <laughs> 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 Uh, no, not just at the moment, thank you. If you don't like me, I get tired. Oh, really? Well, that won't do it. I'm all right. I like you. You like a drink? Uh, no, not just now. 
I get fired if you don't like a drink. Tell me, do you get fired if I just sit here very quietly and uh, go to sleep? Yes. Oh. Isn't there rather a high standard of activity demanded here? I get fired if you don't give me 200 cruzeros. Oh, I see. All right, here's the money. Then you can go and join my playmates in there. No risk of getting fired with them. Oh, uh, excuse me, C could you tell me the way to the harbour, please? Ma? No, 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 the harbour. Ah, plenty, Ma, senor, that one. Very nice. Oh, thank you. Oh, excuse me. Uh, could you tell me the way to the harbour, please? Oh, Doctor! Oh, poor Branch, I'm sorry. I'm glad to see you. I'm lost. Good heavens. Lost? Yes. Well, I always carry a small map of the city whenever I go ashore. Oh, very good idea. And a pocket compass. Uh, I say, would you care for a nightcap? I know a rather charming little place just down the road there. Much better style than the others. All right, if you insist. Well, I don't insist. <laughs> I just thought it'd be rather jolly. Yes, well, fine, fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Splendid fare. Excellent cuisine. Yes. Very good cellar. It's a favourite haunt for presents. Right back. <clears throat> Good morning. Oh, is it? <clears throat> oh. <clears throat> it's all right, I've chocked it. Chicks it. Chocked what? Chicks. Bill. Oh, good. Doctor, you don't mind paying due. Like a fool, I've come out without any money. <laughs> <laughs> so am I. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Doctor, you might have said. I mean, we'd never have come to an expensive place like this and ordered all this champagne. <laughs> Would we? What, what, what are we going to do? Well, let's give him our watches. No, 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 please. No more watches. Already I got two drawers full of watches. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> now, don't you be impersonal. I'm not going to stand any nonsense in these words. Well, never mind. I'm a British citizen. Send for the ambassador. Hooray! Send for the police. I don't know what the captain is going to say about this when he hears about it, and I really do not know. Me, of all people. You don't want to worry, mate. They usually let you out in the morning with a caution. No, but I'm on watch at four. <laughs> Anybody care for a song? Anybody care for a song? No. Seen you geezer somewhere before. Uh. When August suns are shining, when August rains are falling, y'all. Oh. There we are. Oh, it's number one. Send it on. Evening all. Hello. Oh, hello, Doc. Been making the rounds, I see. Easter, what have you been up to? Well, a little husband trouble, Doc. You know, it happens to the best of us from time to time. Oh, Evening, Mr. Archer. Yeah. <laughs> These are the sales. People stay here overnight. Next morning they pay a fine, or they go to not so nice accommodation. Very modern, yes? Uh, are they all criminals? Oh, yeah, yeah Mama. Hello, darling. Come on, bring the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that revolting beast. Are you only professional, is it? Uh, no, purely profit. Uh, do, do you know my partner in crime, Aubrey? Hello. Oh, how do you do? Look <laughs> at the lobes of the ears and the simian features. A murderer, if ever I saw one. Yes, rather like who was it? Crippin. <laughs> <laughs> now let me show you my museum. It is full of wonderfully disgusting things. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I can't wait. <laughs> They're shocking. They look British, too, some of them. Yes. Oh, well, I suppose I'll just have to take their medicine. 
What you do, huh? Hmm? Oh, it's just a little game, officer. Quite harmless. Just have to say which the lady is. Hmm? Would you care to try? See? Right. Oh. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, you're a sharp one, you are. Here, what about a little flutter? A gamble, you know, money. No. Oh, see, 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 see. Now, what'll the bet be? All right, here we go. Pronto, pronto. Here we are. Now, ready? Now, yes, sir. Oh, go, go, go. Easter. Proof of the pudding. You beast. <laughs> Sorry, darlings, wrong ship for dinner. That put you off. Porter, isn't this the Lotus? Madam, it is the Lotus, and I am the third officer. Oh, so sorry. But you do look a little jim jammy in that get up. We're the passengers. You mean you're sailing with us? Yes. <clears throat> Would you please take us to the captain? Well, there's no hurry, is there? What about a little spot of something after your long walk, eh? Oh, yes, with pleasure. I am Miss Mallet. Miss Mallet. Yes, I can see you are. This way, please. Oh, this is going to be a wonderful trip. Uh, the ladies, sir. Ah. Welcome aboard Lotus, Miss Mallet. Thank you. And uh, Miss... Elaine Colbert. Mademoiselle Colbert, how do you do? Well, we must make you nice and comfy, mustn't we? What accommodation do you reserve for the ladies, Wimble? Uh, well, sir, I thought perhaps the hospital. The hospital for the chairman's daughter and her friend? The doctor's got a double cabin, hasn't he? Yes, sir. Well, put them in there. Please, don't turn anyone out because of me. Nonsense, my dear. He'll be delighted. He'd better be in any case. Darling, we must do exactly as the captain says. We don't want to be a nuisance to anyone. Oh, hey, Doc, come and have a drink. I've got something to tell you. Very exciting news, I'll watch. Just a minute. I must get a shower. I'll be stocking up the hospital. Right. I'm sorry, I thought I was still on the Lotus. Oh, you are. I, I thought this was my cabin. It is. I'm afraid you have to go to the hospital. Uh, yes, I'm afraid you're right. Uh, no, I mean, they have given us your cabin. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, it's perfectly all right. Uh, could you just tell me why? Oh, we are passengers, Miss Merritt and I. Oh, I see. <laughs> yes. Did you sleep well last night, Doctor? <laughs> Yes, I did. Thank you very much for asking. We uh, played cards rather late, you know. <laughs> did your temperature rise a little up? Uh, yes, it did. <laughs> it did rather. I'm sorry, we have taken your cabin. Oh, no, not at all. Anything uh, to help you at any time. Uh, you know, if you, <clears throat> if you catch a cold or something. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I suppose I'll be seeing more of you presently. Oh, um, I'd be very grateful if you wouldn't mention last night to the captain. Of course not. <laughs> Thank you. What is it like, your Captain Hogg? 
Well, he... He's inclined to fly off the handle sometimes. As there are now ladies aboard, you will all obey the following instructions. There will be one, no skylarking. Two, no ruddy swearing. Three, no indecorous consumption of alcohol. You will behave at all times as officers and save the mark as gentlemen. Bearing in mind that one of the ladies is in a strong position to report your conduct to the chairman of the line. And as I'm in the same boat, you better all keep your noses clean. Understand? Yes, sir. Yes, Good. Sir. Now, there's another little matter I should like to talk to you about. A certain fellow captain of the line, who shall be nameless, seems to be under the erroneous impression that this ship is inferior to his. This impression must be corrected forthwith. I ask for suggestions. <clears throat> Sir. Well? How about a football match? If I may say so, I'm rather a good kick. Any kicking to be done aboard this vessel will be done by me. I've decided what we're going to do. We're going to hold a ship's dance. It'll demonstrate to uh, certain fellow captains of mine, to say nothing of the chairman's daughter and the British colony in general, that this is the finest vessel of a tonnage afloat. There will be a dance, gentlemen. And it's better be a ruddy good one, or I shall want to know the reason why. Here, come on, let's hurry it up. We won't get it finished. Mr. Trail. There? Balloons, Mr. Trail. I beg your pardon, sir. I said balloons. You can't run any self-respecting dance without balloons. We got any? No, sir. Get some. Any particular shape, sir? Round ones, Mr. Trail. You're the entertainment officer, aren't you? Yes, sir. What have you done about the drink? Well, we've got some cup, sir. Cup, Mr. Trail? Wine, Mr. Trail. Wine for the ladies. We haven't got any, sir. Get some. And see that it's marked wine on the label so they know what they're drinking. What the devil do you think you're doing there, Mr. Archer? Putting down beetle powder? No, sir. It's French chalk for the dancing. Oh. Come here, Mr. Archer. I don't think much of your waltzing, Mr. Archer. Well, I'm not very fond of the waltz, sir. My officers waltz and like it. Put some more of that stuff down. Well, I think that's sufficient. Put some more down. Mr. Hornbeam. Yes, sir. What's the matter with this bunting? Uh, looks like a lot of chewed seaweed. Well, sir, we changed it on your orders. Change it back again. Now, no, sir. At once. This is a ship starts, Mr. Hornbeam. Not an excuse for loafing and idleness. There you go, sir. Balloons, Mr. Trail. Oh! And balloons to you, sir. Doctor. Doctor, can you come quickly? What's the matter? Where's the cook? Oh, what's he done now? Fricassee himself? Oh, just about. Can you come at once? He said from his wife, she's got another man. Jenkins, I am sorry. What does she say? Dear Vic, just to tell you, I'm in trouble because of my love. Rosie, can I have a look? Yeah. Jenkins, can't you read? She says, I'm in trouble because of my liver. Pete's sake, get on with your work. Oh, thank you, Doc. Why are you taking your teeth out? Oh. I thought I might swallow them and choke to death. Well, put them back in again. I can't think what I did with them. Be a good boy and find them. Welcome aboard the finest ship in the Fathom Line, with the finest crew. 
You know my first at Hornby, don't you? Hearing? Hands up. And my doctor, Sparrow. <laughs> Good evening, sir. We've met before, haven't we? I don't think so, sir. I'm new. Odd. Your face seems familiar. You go and wait on the upper deck, and I'll get some drinks. Up there? Yes, up there. All right. All right. Yes, sir. I want a couple of drinks. You know the form? Something uh, special? Oh, oh, yes, Mr. Trio. Uh, glasses, Harry. <laughs> I have here a little cocktail, sir, that I have prepared special for myself and friends. I call it Fire Alarm. Oh, looks jolly good. What's in it? Oh, that's, uh, as we of the Bartending Brotherhood say, would be telling. <laughs> it's tremendous! <laughs> there you are. Yes. Bang ho! Bang ho! <laughs> <laughs> Strong, isn't it? Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. That's the fruit you're tasting. Ooh. I say, uh, would you care to come and see the steering gear? Why? Well, it's uh, rather an interesting one, actually. I'd like you to see it. Oh. All right. Splendid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Come along. <laughs> Captain, you do waltz well. Thank you. Do you jitterbug too? Madam, I do not. Oh, don't you? Oh, I shall have to teach you. We'll be able to cut a rug during the long voyage home. We shall have a lot of fun. Oh, sorry. Was that your foot? It was. Uh, oh. Excuse me. Oh. Again? Hello. Thank you very much. Tell me, what do you do on this ship? I'm an apprentice. Oh, you mean you're learning the job? That's right. It seems to me you've learned it pretty well already. Are you a very good doctor? <laughs> well, I'm a, I'm a better doctor than I am a dancer. Doesn't matter. At least we are going in the right direction. Yes, I know. That's what I was worried about. Worries you? Why? Well, it's... Um... Out of the frying pan into the fire. Simon, you speak too quickly for me. <laughs> I don't understand. Please, say it in French. I don't know the French for frying pan. What is that frying pan? Uh, in English, we call it um, Wendy. Wendy? Mm. It's the name of a girl in English, yes. like Helen. <laughs> yes. But it's also a frying pan? Uh, yes, yes, in a way. <laughs> and Helen, what is that? Ah, uh, I'm afraid... Um, it's the fire. Mm. <laughs> ah, here we are. Bang ho. Bang ho. <laughs> Strong, isn't it? Oh, is it? That's the fruit you're tasting. Mm -hmm. I say, uh, would you care to see the steering gear? Why? Well, it's rather an interesting one, actually. I'd like you to see it. All right. Oh, splendid. Come on. Oh, here, yeah, do you know where the doctor is, sir? The doctor? Why, well, I think he's on the poop. Not myself. Well, he's wanted urgent in the forecastle, sir. A couple of the stokers knocked themselves out doing a dance. Doing it? Knocked them? Oh, they were fighting. Oh, no, sir, no. They were executing the pas de deux from Swan Lakes. Pardon? Well, I could find him. Only one way to run a ship? Method. Hey, Beamish? By all means. Order and method. Place for everything and everything in its place. And nowhere else. Check it! Excuse me.
have seen the steering gear one. Have you? Oh, yes, so you have. Well, um, come and see it again. Isn't there another part of this ship with less of that nasty, nasty iron about? Mm -hmm. I expect we can find somewhere. <laughs> You've got to see your own bed. That's right. Oh. Oh, Jane. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Come here. You can't sleep here. Miss Horace, I'm afraid she's a bit tired. How dare you, you swine! Oh, you misunderstand, Miss. I, I'm a doctor. I oh, find... so you've drugged her, is that? No, 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 of course not. I'm going to murder you. I wish you'd listen to reason, sir, for just one moment. I'm going to tear you into little pieces. I'm going to trample you into the carpet. I shouldn't do that if I were you, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, scared, eh? I know your I, sort. I, I'm not thinking of myself, sir, or even of your carpet. I'm thinking... Thinking of you. Thinking? Huh? You needn't think about me. Well, sir, I have to as a doctor because violent exercise is very dangerous for you with your, your complaint. Now, don't play for time. What complaint? You suffer from Higginbottom's disease, don't you, sir? No, I do not. Oh. I suppose they were afraid to tell you. Now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, dear, I'm afraid it's all too obvious. Oh, yes, the symptoms are all there. Poor Daddy. <laughs> uh, would you mind putting your arms above your head? No, I won't. Ah, I see. It hurts too much, does it? Certainly not. Well, it's not very good, is it? Don't mind. I wonder if you'll just, uh, just try to bend over. And you go. Lower. I assure you this is a matter of life and death. Oh! That's all right. Now, just you stay there for a moment. Uh, would you start counting? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Ordinary Seaman Wilson and Merritt, sir, for logging. All right, Mr. Hornby. Wheel the perishers in. Thank you, sir. Come on in, you two. Ordinary Seaman Wilson and Merritt, sir, found fighting in the forecastle, contrary to Article 17 of the Merchant Navy Act. Thank you, Mr. Hornby. Now, first of all, I want to make one thing perfectly clear to you two. You're getting a completely fair hearing this morning. You're quite at liberty to ask questions of me or any of the other officers, and you may call witnesses in your defence. As far as I'm concerned, a man's innocent until he's proved guilty. Do you hear that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Very well. Now, you tell me your version of the story. Well, sir, it was like this here, sir. Me and my mate were having a cup of tea. You flaming liar, you were rotten drunk, both of you. Oh, me, sir? Who, me? Of course you were. Don't answer me back or I'll kick you around the forecastle. Cup of tea, indeed. What do you take me for? I was at sea when you were playing marbles in the filth of the gutter with the marks of the cradle hardly off your... Mr. Hornbeam. You found these men fighting? Yes, sir. Doctor, did you or did you not find these men drunk? Well, sir, the scientific test... There you are, the doctor agrees with me. You were soused, you miserable scouses. You know what I like to do with you? 
I'd like to cap you in arms in the chain locker on bread and water until we get back to port. I'd like to lash you to the main mast. Stand up straight when I speak to you! And flung the living hide off you! That's the sort of treatment you scum deserve, you dozy, idle, loafing, illegitimate cutthroats! All right. Find five shillings. Good morning. All right, get out. Oh, isn't it a lovely morning? Exquisite morning, sir. Mr. Archer, we're not on a pleasure cruise. My compliments to Mr. Hornbeam and tell him to get that deck cargo properly lashed and stowed. It looks like a bundle of knitting. Ah. Aye, aye, sir. Uh, Mr. Hornbeam? Ah, uh, Mr. Hornbeam, I wonder if you might... Know... Hornbeam! Get that deck cargo properly secured! Uh, aye, aye, sir. Hmm. Captain Beamish didn't have nearly such a pretty bridge as you have, Captain. Uh-huh. <laughs> You know, I think it would be rather nice if you had some ivy in pots, sort of trailing over everything, wouldn't it? I don't think your father would approve. Daddy, oh, Daddy does everything I suggest. He calls me his ideas, girl. Yes, I can see the justice of that. Get out of my way! <laughs> <clears throat> don't you ever feel isolated up here, Captain? No, Miss Ballard. Oh. Of course you have the seagulls, I suppose. You can't have nice, cosy chats with them, can you? Oh, oh, may I ask you a favor, Captain? Of course, Miss Ballard. May I? May I drive it for a little? Drive it? Daddy says every woman should know how to. Oh, he does, does he? Yes. Call the master. Miss Ballard will take over the wheel for a spell. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, thank you. Mr. Fellows, Mr. Sir? Archer, send the doctor to me at once. And step aye, lively. Sir. Mr. Archer, attend Miss Ballard in the wheelhouse. Oh, ah. Oh, is there a highway code or something I should read first? <laughs> ah, ah. Oh, Mr. Archer, dear, which are the brakes? Brakes? Of course. Good morning, sir. Huh? You sent for me? Yes, about this uh, woman, Mallet, the one with the teeth. She's pursuing me. Oh, really? I hadn't noticed, sir. Don't be such a confounded young liar. You know, I'm a calm, reasonable sort of man, but uh, she might drive me to lose control of myself. Really, sir? Don't say really, sir. It's a very awkward situation for me. What are you going to do about it? Well, I don't really know what I can do about it, sir. You're the doctor, aren't you? You give her a pill or something to make her sleep for a fortnight? Well, wouldn't that be rather difficult to explain to the uh, prospective patient's father, sir? Yes, I hadn't thought of that. But this can't go on. I mean, the woman's got an obsession about me. I could try psychiatrists. I'm not... No, I don't want that muck aboard my ship. Better give me something. Something in the nature of a... a love potion, sir? Uh, to make the obsession mutual. Don't be disgusting. No, give me something to calm my nerves and make it strong. Very well, sir. I'll send you up a sedative. It might also calm your temper. I haven't got a temper! All right, sir, all right. But uh, don't drink any alcohol at the same time. Otherwise, you'll be excessive. Excessively drunk, and the consequences could be disastrous. Very well. Send it up right away, and you better see it's good. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Doc, but Father, uh, beg pardon, the captain, wants another box of those pills. Another? Yes, sir. All right. Nice and quiet up here this morning, Mr. Hornby. Yes, sir, very. Restful, eh? Yes, sir. Your new pills, sir. Thank you. Put them in my cabin, will you? I don't need them today. Yes, sir. Mr. Hornby, what the devil are all those men doing below there? I'll go and see, sir. I'll go myself. Nobody seems to have enough to do aboard this ship. Good morning, sir. You're stocking, Mr. Fellows. Excuse me, sir. Miss Kipper! Good morning, Captain. You come for your sunbathe? I do not sunbathe. Oh, but you should. It's so good for you. Daddy does whenever he can. I was thinking you might find somewhere a little less public. 
Oh, how sweet of you. We'll come up on the bridge, shall we? Go along, darling. I inquire is the matter with you? I'm stuck. Stoker Cobble, sir, says he's stuck. Stuck? Stuck. There I am, doctor. Stuck in a way good up, minding my own business. Well, suddenly I get stuck. Just like this. Look. Uh, so you, you, you mean you can't stand up straight? No. Uh, what we at the medical fraternity call a sloppy disc, eh, doctor? Oh, no, it is isn't, Easter. Easter, you're going to stand round there. Hmm? Now, look. Uh, you come across here, put your hands on Easter's shoulders and try and stand up straight. Oh! No. I can't feel it, Keynes. You feel that? Yeah, it tickles. Oh, Easter, get him. Come here. Get underneath and take the strain. Now, look. You push up and I'll try and pull, right? But... Shall I get the chief engineer to fix up the block and catch him? I don't think that's necessary. Come here. Hey, Doc. I'm not going to be left this way for keeps, am I? You know, the wife will think I'm taking the mickey out of her. No, you'll be right in the jiffy, I promise you. Oh, Easter. Hmm? Easter, give me some oil, will you? Oh. Rub him down with. This knee's loosening up. Well, I've got some castor oil. Castor oil, olive oil, imbrication, anything will do. Oh, thank you. Miss Mallet pinched the olive oil for her bang de soleil, as our French friends say. Oh. Good morning, miss. Uh, thanks, Doc. You fixed me fine. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> well, I had a little backache, but funnily enough, it's all right now. <laughs> I'm sure we can find something wrong with you if we try. <clears throat> now then, uh, how about a little pink gin? Oh. There you are, Miss Bennett. I seem to have rubbed almost everything. Thank you. It feels lovely. <sighs> Captain, hello. Oh, you don't mind my borrowing one of your officers, do you? Madam, as far as I'm concerned, you can keep him. As a deck officer, I've always considered he'd make a good greaser. <sighs> oh. Don't worry. He doesn't really mean it. This was nothing I do seems to please. There you are. And drink it down. Do you good? This is the first time I've ever drank pink gin in a medicine glass. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could say the same thing. Bon chance. You have no work? No, business is not very brisk today. Do you enjoy it? Not the job? Oh, I don't know. Quite. I'm afraid some of them don't think very much of me. They, they think I'm a bit of a landlubber. Quoi? Um, uh, uh, a, a little bit green. Oh. I suppose you can't blame them, really. Why do you do it? Well, I developed what is known in the trade as an allergy. What to? Feathers or something? <laughs> no. <laughs> the hungry girls in glasses called Wendy. Oh, I see. <laughs> Are you better now? Oh, yes. I'm much better, thank you. <laughs> uh, you know, it's usually the doctor that does the questioning. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, um, uh, are you allergic to anything? Uh, ship's doctors, for example? Oh, I haven't noticed it. Excuse me, Doc, could you come urgent? Look, if it's the cook, you can cut him down yourself. No, it's old Harry, Doc. He doesn't look too good. He says his belly... Pardon, miss. His abdomen hurts. Oh, all right. Will you excuse me? Excuse me, sir. 
Sir, do you think we can go a little faster? Why? Well, it's old Harris, the quartermaster. He's got an acute appendicitis. I'd like to get him to hospital as soon as possible. Why? For an operation, sir. You know our position, Doctor? I can't make port for at least three days. You'll have to operate yourself. Me, sir? You're the doctor, aren't you? Well, I... That's what you're paid for? I'm not the surgeon, sir. It's a different thing altogether. I don't mind what you are. I'll have no dead quartermasters aboard my ship. Operate yourself, Doctor. That's an order. Very well, sir. If you want any nurses, I'm sure the ladies will be delighted to oblige. Oh, with pleasure. Scrub it down thoroughly. And then sterilize the instruments. Yes, sir. Have you given an anesthetic before, Easter? Oh, yes, Doc, I remember. Once in the Red Sea. Yes, all right, all right. Are you a bit nervous, Doctor? Well, as a matter of fact, I am, yes. Well, this might be the time for a little medical comfort, sir. Uh, yeah, after it's over, Easter. I'm going to get some more bulbs. Do what you can up here, will you? Right here. Easter? How do you know I'm out, Chippy? Lie on it, on your back. I'll show you. Hands on your chest, huh? Like this. Ah, oh, you'll slip off this like a wet fish. Very dignified, look. Where was the baby's bottom? Nothing like a good belly. Let's see for dignity, I always say. <clears throat> well, no, Doc, just taking a few precautions. So I see. Here, hold this. And don't forget, two waves from Charlie and his kick the bucket. And you lower away to half mast and Bob's your uncle. Oh, good morning, Doc. Good morning. Don't take it too hard, will you? What's Harry's chances, Chippy? Oh, I don't know. You see, I don't think this doc's ever done a job like this before. All right, Doc. Yes. Yes, I think you'll do. sign of infection. Could have come by now if it was going to. Simon, mm -hmm. why don't you go to bed? We haven't had any sleep for a long time. No, not yet. I must wait till I'm quite sure. Do you want some more coffee? Hmm? Oh, yes. You're a very good nurse, you know. You are a very good doctor, I know. <laughs> Oh, excuse me, Doc. Someone to see you, special. Oh, for Pete's sake. Give him a couple of Aspro. Tell him to come back tomorrow morning. Easter. All right, send him in. I'll see him. There's more than one, Doc. Oh. All right. Doc's just coming. Well, uh, sir, as uh, representing the crew of the SS Lotus of the Fathom Line, we've uh, we've taken the liberty to come here to express our gratitude for what you've done for old Harry there. You see, we, we, we're all very fond of old Harry there, and uh, it's our opinion, Nem Con, that you're a proper ship's doctor to have done what you did for him, seeing what a pickle he was in. And so, sir, we'd like you to accept this small token of our esteem and regard. Oh, wait, wait. Hey, 
that's your sentiment. I'd like you to have it, Doc. Thank you, I... Thank you. Very much. You see, sir, what we felt... Huh. Are you glad they have given you the bird? Uh, yes, in a way. <laughs> I seem to have won 33 and 6 from you, Captain. Shall I add it to the list? If you please. What are those pills you keep taking? They're the headaches. Oh, do you have one? I have on this trip. You worry. About your promotion, perhaps? Oh, I'm sure you needn't. Somehow I can see the one thick stripe on your arm. Commodore Hogg of the Fathom Line. I wonder if Daddy could see it too. Yes. Commodore Sir Wentworth Hogg. Yes. Yes, it suits you. It's very kind of you to say so, I'm sure. There's just one teeny thing against it, perhaps. You're not married. Steamship lines do like their Commodores to be married. It seems to make them more stable. I know Daddy feels like that. Oh, well, I must go and tidy up. Thank you for the game. It was lovely. Wentworth. Lovely evening. Yes, indeed, Miss Mallard. Do you happen to know the captain's engaged? Engaged? Oh, I think it's a little too soon to... Oh, you mean busy? I thought you meant... Uh... <clears throat> no, he isn't busy, Mr. Archer. I've just left him. Sir? What do you want? Well, sir, among other things, I'd like to offer my congratulations, sir. I hope I'm the first to do so. What are you chattering about, you grinning monkey? Miss Mallet, sir. The happy event. Your impending nuptials. And who told you I was engaged to be married to Miss Mallet? Well, sir, uh... Come here. Come here! Has this ship's company got nothing better to do than sit about and gossip? It's time they had. I'm nothing of the sort, do you understand? Nothing of the sort. And now get out. Get out. Submit your alarm. Get out! Yes. And that will be the end of our little shipboard romance. Yes, I suppose it will. You know, we're playing a very traditional scene. A traditional? Why? Well, we've got a ship's rail, a calm sea, moonlight, you and me, the end of a voyage. All we need now is a celestial choir. You sound sad. Well, I am sad. What happens to you now? Oh. I will take some holidays and after go on working somewhere. And you? Uh, I, I'm staying on with the ship. They're bound for Rio next trip and I've never seen Rio. Are there any frying pans in Rio? <laughs> Hundreds, I should think. Why don't you come with me and find out? I don't think I'd be a very good doctor's wife. No, and I wouldn't be very good in cabaret. I could always learn a few tricks from Easter. <laughs> well, I think we have to say goodbye now, before... Yes. Bon voyage, Doctor. Bon voyage. 
Who's on watch? I am, sir. You go below. I'm taking over. Thank you, sir. You get below, too. Aye, aye, sir. And don't mince. Some English delight in. Travel is nobody in this ship's got enough to do. Sound the alarm bell seven times. But that's boat station, sir. Do as you're told. single abandoned ship. I'll give him something to do. Trio, I say, what's happened? I hear the engine rooms are blazing inferno, old boy. Is it? I heard we'd struck an iceberg. An iceberg? Uh, uh, if I may make sure, old doctor, abandoned ship. I'll gather that. Warfare, syringe, torch. Oh, and the medical comforts, perhaps, doctor. That's the first sound clinical idea you've had on this trip, Easton. I'll make a perish of sweat. Oh, how tiresome. I do hope this doesn't give the captain a headache. As quick as you can, ladies, please, we're sinking. Oh! Do you want any help, darling? No, no. Oh, please do me. I can't If you do want any help, I'll be in the light. Oh, you must go. Oh. Come on, I'm wasting time. Down the idle Lincoln boot. What the devil's happening to the three boat? And all lifeboats at the double! Come on! I've got water on my knee. You get water over the head if you don't get up there. Where are the women? This, this valet? This cold hour? What's the trouble, Mr. Trey? Oh, don't worry. Something's gone wrong, that's all. Maybe the steering gear is worn out. No panic, please. No panic. Don't worry. One load away there. The ship's going down. Doctor! You don't get a move on your face to learn this way. Johnson, Williamson, Jenkins! Where's that ape of a cook? I'm sorry, sir. I lost Rosie's photo. That's not all you've lost. Oh, come on, get in there. Come on, all of you. Yes, come with us. Keep the deal. Call yourselves sailors. Fireworks! Oh, I've always loved them. Let's take our proper places, Miss Ballard. Oh! Please, let us keep our umbrellas in their proper places, too. So sorry. Now, no panic, please. Oh, call what a lesser. Get up. Good. And you keep that dog under control, Jimmy. Oh, what a lesser. I'll never it's see what happened. This is no moment for something to Come on, Doc. There's plenty of time for that later. Stop! You're the doziest, idlest, most insufferable bunch of incompetent thinker poops I've ever had the misfortune to sail with. Now, free all in ball again. Get back your quarters, we'll start over again. Right, get back your quarters. Doc, you come in here. You know, I was... 
Well, let's have no dumb incidents. <laughs> He's drunk. Drunk? He's got a bottle up there with him. On top of all those pills? He's not drunk, he's crackers. Hmm? He's incapable, he's balmy. Tyson, dismiss all hands. Disregard all further alarm signals. The captain's ill. Mr. Hornby, this is mutiny. I'll cap you in arms. Well, Doc, your patient's waiting. Mine? Yeah, the Doc. You've got a drop of soothing syrup somewhere, haven't you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Easter. Get the hypodermic quickly. You better go and distract his attention somehow. Right. Mutinous scum! I'll have the ball of trade on the lot of you for this! Oh, thank you. Is it all right, Doctor? Yes, that's fine. Keep him quiet for a week. Well, bon voyage, Doctor, if I may make so bold. You suppose you like your coming with me? Oh, no, no, no! <laughs> you're coming with me? Alan, hold that. Get off it's my quite, bridge! It's quite all right. Get off my bridge! <laughs> I remember you stay close behind me. <laughs> when I reach back for the hypodermic, you give it to me. Who's that? It's all right, sir. <laughs> it's only the doctor. Get off my bridge. Well, I wanted to have a word with you. Get off my bridge, you snotty nose medico! Ow! <laughs> He ain't half gonna have an headache when he wakes up in the morning, Doc. Doc? Curious. Just when we need you most. Well, you're gonna be perfectly all right, but you're gonna need a nurse. Nurse? Never had a nurse in my life. Where's your cap? I'm sorry, sir. I leave the captain entirely in your hands, and the best of luck. Get out! How long do you suppose it'll be? Oh, for another 40 years or so, I expect. Now, Wentworth, take your medicine like a good boy. Or I shall tell Daddy. Telegram for Miss Helen, Doc. Well, you better take it to her. I thought you might like to, Doc. Why? Well, he says she's got a job in Rio. In Rio? How'd you know? Oh, I got x ray eyes, Doc. Then I had a read to make sure. Easter. As we of the medical fraternity say, you're out. Sure. Go on, Sheldon. Thank you.